Uh, unfortunately, where the hat of comic foil in that uh, last <laughs> segment? I earned it. Show. I earned it. I said pager. And, yeah, but lost half the audience. But I got, I got where you were coming from. Yeah. That is that is the way it was done for the longest time, right? And I actually sort of missed the days of the pager because you could ignore it for a while. <laughs> you didn't have When you answer the phone, you're like, there. Well, and, you, don't, and then, you don't have to answer your phone. No, let's not go crazy. You I mean, don't have to answer. Yeah, okay. Right. All right. Just the uh, ring. <laughs> You'd be surprised to learn that once I leave here, where you know the phone has to be answered here. Obviously, once I get back to my personal life, if I don't recognize the number, I never answer it. And uh, then once I answer, once I see the number ringing, you know we all do that personal screen. If it's this person, I need this amount of time to talk to them. If it's that person, it's a quick phone call. Where am I in my day? Can I afford a long phone call right now? But you're quick on the text. Oh, yeah, most of the time. Yeah, I have to. You got to schedule the show, baby. Yeah. And I appreciate guests who text me back quickly. And that uh, would include the vice president of the Berkeley County Board of Education, Jackie Long, who joins us in studio. Jackie. Good morning. How are you doing? I'm well. I had to laugh at John's. Uh, I was listening a little bit about the pager because that reminds me of Pat Murphy, our board president. He doesn't still is, have a pager, does he? No, but it's close. <laughs> <laughs> Flip phones. He, he's got the he next tell. He's got the next tell two way walkie talkie thing, right? Yeah. And also via telephone, Damon Wright. Damon, good morning. Good morning. Damon, did you ever have a pager? No, but I did have one of those huge car phones that I bought for my wife. Oh, yeah. I had one of those. Years ago. You got yeah. like three free minutes, and then it was like $100 a minute after that for the first. Oh, my goodness. Those were expensive. And they were the size of uh, VCR in the early yeah. days, too. Yeah. yeah. Hey, uh, let's talk about the superintendent selection. Ron Stevens has been promoted to the superintendent of schools by a three to two vote. You, Mike Murphy, and Damon were part of the three, four. Uh, Pat Murphy, the board president, and Melissa Power were the two against. We talked to Melissa yesterday. Good to have the two of you today representing two of the three yes votes on today. Jackie, why did you vote yes? Michael Martin. Michael Martin. What did I say? Murphy. Oh, Michael Murphy. Yeah. There's a lot of Murphys involved in education <laughs> yeah. in, in Berkeley County sometimes. Yes. What was your question again? I'm sorry. <laughs> it was, uh, what's the real name of the Board of Education yeah. <laughs> member, first name Michael? Uh, you voted yes? Yes, I did. For Ron Stevens? Why did yes. you vote yes? I felt that we needed to continue some consistency for a while. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think we need to give him a chance to um, prove what, or, or at least work on what we, the board feels like are, are obstacles or challenges. And um, I think even though there were some no votes that we all want and I'm speaking for myself, but I know what I heard at our meeting. We mm -hmm. all want Mr. Stevens to succeed and uh, want him to do the best. We're behind him. Damon Wright, you are a yes vote. Why did you vote yes? Um, for some of the same reasons, I thought we needed to have um, give Mr. Stevens a chance as he was just in the interim role. Um, it was very close amongst all of the people that applied. Um, so since it was so close, I felt... There's really no need to to change, and uh, I felt that Mr. Stevens could do a really good chance, uh, opportunity to retain the staff that we have, help our students, um, and move the county forward, and just give him a, just a better, a further opportunity to prove himself. Damon, in the, during the term that Ron's been the interim superintendent, what did you see that made you think that yes, this is something we want to continue? I think Ron, one of his strongest points is uh, his ability to communicate and relate to people. Um, I think, you know, if you meet him, he's, you know, very jovial. So somebody that's very good with communication and somebody that can really um, get that positive message across uh, rather than the doom and gloom. Uh, a lot of times we're here, he's, he's able to uh, turn something into a positive and see room for growth. Jackie? Yeah, I feel the same. I think he's, you know, he's been in the county a long time in different aspects of uh, board positions, and people know him. Um, he's got a very, as J Damon said, a very jovial attitude, and, you know, when he speaks with the public, whether it be at um, Rotary or whatever, or just in general when, a, when an individual contacts him, a parent or whatever, he, you know, he, he, he takes their considerations and their questions to um, heart and um, 
I think he'll be an asset to our community as we continue on. Signed to a one-year contract. Yes. Okay. Why the one-year contract, Jackie? Well, you know, education in the nation and in Berkeley County and West Virginia in general are going through some major changes. So we have some challenges ahead of us. Um, Ron didn't actually get to work on those academics is a big thing with me Uh, you know we had a bond to try to get passed that was thrown at him right away then we had a cyber attack and then you know we went into um, um, scheduling board um, this candidates thing and or or trying to get a superintendent let me get it out so I, I felt that he he didn't really have the time to work as much on Mm -hmm. the things that he would have really liked to work on. So this year will give him that opportunity and it'll give us an opportunity to work with him more and and share our concerns, which we always do anyway. He, you know, he's good at listening to that and um, we'll see how the next year goes. And, you know, it's a contract renewal. We don't have to go through this process again if it's him. So is the one year contract standard? for this type of position? It isn't, but I know there are five counties that have a one-year contract, and there are 20 counties uh, that are looking for superintendents, and I think it'll be more standard. That's just my opinion. So what are the, you, you've mentioned obstacles and challenges a couple of times. What are the, the big ones that need to be addressed? What are you hoping most to get from the new superintendent? This is either Damon for you or for Jackie. Uh, well, I'll go first, and then okay. I'll, I'll try not to hog Damon's time. You don't want to Pat Murphy him? No. <laughs> I'm trying to be nice. Um, Jackie, just, just page me when you're... <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a pager, Damon. That's a 10-pointer right there. Yeah, that is. Um, you know, academics is a big issue for me. I think it's a big issue for our board members. And you know, Meaning they, test scores, that sort of thing? Test scores, that, just academics in general. We have to improve on that. And, you know, definitely Mr. Stevens didn't have an opportunity to delve into that full force. And um, teacher recruitment and, int- and retention, that's just top of the list. And uh, I wrote some things down. Uh, security and safety and... Um, discipline Uh, and those aren't in an order of importance to me they're all very very important so we have a lot of things we need to work on and you know I want to give him that opportunity to do that Damon yeah I'd say I'd say um, teacher recruitment retention be maybe high would probably be my highest simply because if we have the certified and trained staff then that will lead to uh, better student outcomes um, because we continue to have fill our our rooms, or classrooms with uh, permanent subs or people that are teaching outside of their um, primary um, category, it, it it can harm our students. So we're trying. We need to retain and, and recruit teachers that are specialized in their field. That way, they can teach and educate our students better. So I think that's one of the big ones, um, and that will of course lead to better scores, um, better discipline because the teachers that will be better trained or better equipped with classroom management and then as a board and as a superintendent we can back those teachers and give them the support uh, that they need and even with our, our bus drivers and staff and nurses and everyone else they all need that support from us what month did ron take over as the interim um i th- well actually the july 1st july 1 yeah right damon Yes, it was. It was. So I, I think they announced it before I came on the board, but I think it became official July first. Yeah, official July first. Okay, it's hard to believe that an interim superintendent, which basically means you're kind of on a tryout if you're interested in the position full time, could have faced more upheaval than he faced in the ten months that he's filled this position. Uh, and you pointed out some of those challenges earlier, Jackie, including the cyber attack, which was as bad as this county's ever obviously had to 
to go through. So you got an opportunity with the bond that needed to get passed because that provides vital funding in Berkeley County Schools. Uh, you, you got a, a good taste of that from him and then getting through the cyber attack. So you really had the exposure of trial by fire with this guy, Damon, before you had to make a decision as to whether you wanted to extend him or not. What did you see during those crisis times that made you think this is the guy? Um, I think um, one of the big things was even during the bond, I think he's just going out, be will- being willing to meet with the public, answer any questions. Uh, he had the charts, the grass, he had everything um, ready to answer the public. I'm not, the public didn't always come out, but he was there and, and ready to go, um, I think, with the with the cyber attack. And even with all of the – there's so many things that go on that the public doesn't see. Um, being in the board and seeing – all the midnight calls, the the calls, all it's a twenty four seven job. So, uh, seeing how he handled himself, um, and even getting back to us on updating us on different issues, um, made me feel more at ease as to him handling pre- handling the pressure. Uh, even with the cyber attack, he, he knew if he may wanted to say, but he leaves, and you know, it's like maybe I shouldn't say that because it could lead to uh, worse outcomes, and. He, even though he knew he, he couldn't say anything, he, he kept to that. He didn't just leak the things and make things worse. Mm-hmm. Uh, just because the public is, is demanding it, he knew that if I say this or that, then it's going to end up with worse outcomes, and the public is going to be even more upset because I made the situation worse. Your, your phone's starting to fritz in and out a little bit there, Damon. Oh, not sorry. sure if you were moving or not. Jackie, same question. What is it that you saw during the trial by fire, specifically during crisis periods, that made you think this is the right way to go? I think that um, really Ron's experience and um, all the years that he had in pupil services, uh, that gave him experience with school safety. And, you know, he's really knowledgeable in that, and, and, that's, a, and that's a big issue right now. And, and just as Damon said, how, how he deals with the public, um, you know, we don't have to sell this county, but we have a lot of things in this county to sell. Uh, I mean, we it's growing. We don't have certified staff, many of them. Um, so, you know, it, it, we have to have somebody in there that, that has the background, that has seen what's going on in this county, and that uh, has the experience to, to know where we're coming from and where we're headed. And I think Ron has that. Mr. Gilstrap. Yeah, addressing the teacher recruitment and, and retention, the, the drumbeat over the last few months certainly has, has been uh, underpaid, understaffed, and overworked. So in, in terms of a strategy to attract and retain teachers, uh, the General Assembly is, the General Assembly, the House of Delhi, the, the government is, is taking care of the, uh, the lack of locality pay, right? So that's kind of off out out of the the toolbox for the superintendent what strings does the superintendent have to pull to increase retention and attract new teachers i think we need to uh, work go out further and look at um where we recruit and i think maybe there can even be some things with um I don't know. We haven't discussed this in length, but there are things that we can do, I think, that um, – but, you know, those things cost also. Mm-hmm. So, you know, our, our hands are tied sometimes. Damon, that was high on your priority list, too. What what do you see are, that the superintendent can do? Um, I think one of the big things is not to – I think one of the big things is help the staff here feel positive about working here because then they can then – put that positive message out there. Look, I love working work Berkeley County Schools. I mean, and I love doing this and that, and this is this is why this is a good place to work. So if we make the workplaces better for the, the staff we have here, then we can use them as a recruiting tool. Unfortunately, we can't go into colleges and make kids <laughs> go into education. Um, but those teachers that are out there, we can try to make this a better place to work and maybe even look overseas and, and look into possibly hiring people from out of the country and having them come here and work what does that um, mean to make it a that, better yeah. i'm sorry go ahead to make it a better place to work implies that there are issues i don't know internal or whatever that make it something not that not a great place to no. work yeah you're cutting in and out again really, Damon. Well, sorry 
I'll try to say as still as possible. <laughs> um, I think the vast majority of teachers and staff enjoy working here. Uh, there are, you know, some concerns about not having uh, support from principals uh, or even the board office. So we can work to alleviate those concerns as much as possible. You can't please everyone, but you can try to address those concerns as uh, quickly as possible and and go from there. The contract is for $185,000, I believe, which is yes. less than what Dr. Murphy was making. And Melissa Power yesterday, another BOE member, said it was fairly easy to settle on that number as the salary. How do you pick out a six-figure number and decide what the right one is, Jackie? We discussed it. We didn't discuss it in length, but um, and I um, can't really talk about what we did in executive session, but mm -hmm. um, we felt that was comparable to what um, a surrounding counties surrounding. are paying. In West Virginia, or does that also include Maryland and Virginia? Including in some parts of Maryland. And, and, and that that's just the number we came up with. It could have been a negotiating tool, but... Um, you mentioned at the end of this and, one... Oh, go ahead, Damon. No, I'd say another point to that is also if, if people look, um, Berkeley County is like the second largest school district, and we're probably going to be number one but the, that pay is probably fourth or fifth in the state in terms of pay for a superintendent. Yeah, most counties don't pay near that. They pay, they pay less. Yeah, much less. Right. Uh, Dr. Murphy was getting a little over two, if I remember, toward the end of that contract, I correct? I think it was 213 from what I remember. Right. I could be wrong, but it was close to that. At the end of this one year, Jackie, you said you don't have to go through this all over again. You can just renew the contract. What type of criteria will, we be, will you be looking at one year from now when it comes to determining whether you want to renew this one-year contract? Well, for me, it will be how f far we have succeeded in those the uh, obstacles that I thought, think that we have facing us. Mm -hmm. I don't think he can be a miracle worker, um, but, you know, I think there are some challenges out there, and hopefully we can address some of them, and they will uh, somewhat improve. So, How about you, Damon? Um, I'm going to be looking to um, employee relations and um, student changes in how students are, um, I guess, disciplined and, and the backing of the board office to principals and teachers. That's an issue with so, me also. More, so, accountab so accountability, accountability will be one of the big things for me. Yeah. Okay. Uh, are either of you concerned that a 3-2 board vote in a one-year contract sends a message to the Berkeley County Schools community that we're kind of sure we got the right guy, but maybe not? I, I'm not concerned about that. I think that um, we did our due diligence um, of, of trying to, uh, of hiring someone, and um, the individuals that voted no had their specific reasons, and they weren't, um, to me, critical reasons. They they were just different than what we, the three of us had, and mm -hmm. um, you know they'll. I I don't have any problems with that, and I don't think the community will. Damon. No, I don't. I don't think so either. I think if, you know, that, of course, there's gonna be some people in the community that think that, but I think what it does is shows that we are not a rubber stamp board. We're a board that. I was just thinking the other night, we're the most diverse board in the entire state, not just in, you know, in, in almost every category you think of, we're the most diverse. So we're not going to think lockstep the same. Yeah, I would agree with you. I don't know what the breakdowns are of the other school boards around the state, but I think the Berkeley County School Board clearly is one of the more diverse ones around West Virginia. Uh, now, uh, in regards to uh, Pat's vote, you, you, I don't know what we haven't been able to match up schedules with Pat to get him on the show. But what would his main objection have been to Ron getting the renewal or, or being named permanent superintendent? I think you probably need to ask Mr. Murphy that because that those were things that were discussed in an executive session, and if he wants to, you know, get into those details, he can. Melissa Power mentioned yesterday that you guys had everybody had their opportunity to talk about who they thought the best selection was. Um, I don't think that she said she objected necessarily to Ron being selected so much as she thought there was somebody else who might have been a, a better fit. Uh, are you 
free to discuss what the procedure was. Were you were you all putting yeah. forward two names or three names or ranking or stacking? That can there were six candidates, correct? No, there were seven candidates. Seven. Were they all local? No. No, they weren't local. And that's one th- uh, I, I do want to say where we advertised. We did a an, um, an, um, search of the eastern United States. So mm-hmm. um, I thought it was a national search. And, and we advertised in the Journal, the Herald Mail, the Loudoun Times Mirror, the Frederick News Post, Winchester Star. Um, and mo- a lot of those were online. Northern Virginia Daily. Charleston Gazette, the Herald Dispatch, the Dominion Post. We uh, placed um, education on education job boards. Ed Week, um, American Association of School Personnel Association, School Superintendent Association, Association of Latino Administrators and Superintendents, National Alliance of Black School Educators, and we placed on in, uh, LinkedIn, LinkedIn um, targeting superintendents and superintendents. We did a super survey through the Berkeley County Schools uh, community in touch, um, the Chamber of Commerce, the Business Education Partnership, and all Peach Jar accounts, and posted on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn. So, I mean, it was out there. Mm-hmm. If somebody wanted to apply, they had that opportunity. And we had, um, we, we hired a facilitator to help us through the process, Dr. Howard Recall, who has done uh, superintendent searches in many counties, and and the he put out the notice of availability of the job. The applications went back to him, not to us, and then he um, checked the, the, each one of those applicants' certification through the State Department of Ed, and contacted the applicants, uh, set up the interview time, working also with uh, two individuals from our board office. Mm-hmm. Uh, because a lot, of, a lot of what we did, we didn't have to reinvent the wheel because of just having a search three years ago. So, And it was an uh, in-depth search, and this one was also. So now, uh, Damon, I'll take a breath and let you... Damon, yeah, if you don't mind telling us the setup of how you uh, discussed different candidates and then selected one. Uh, well, we had the interviews, and then um, I think we came back on for another meeting and, and basically discussed amongst ourselves, okay, who do you, who really impressed you, and what were the pros and cons? And so we just we went over the pros and cons various times. And I know for myself, I never really settled like on like this person. Every time I thought is is the top then there would be something else that would happen. So I I kept fluctuating. (laughs) So I was never, I always, I went in with an open mind and the whole time I kept an open mind so that I wouldn't um, prejudge anyone. So I think that's pretty much what most of us did. And we just had different, different opinions on what, what we thought, what we were looking for. Yeah, it was really hard. Um, I mean, even up until I had many sleepless nights. I know most of them did, and um, we just had a hard time making uh, a decision, and it came down to where, you know, it hit you. This is who I feel comfortable with. So, yeah. did, did you put forward, like, your two favorites or anything like that and, and begin ranking people? Yes, we did. We narrowed it down to three. Your top then, three candidates? And then we went from there. Correct, Damon? Yes, and then we had the second round of interviews. Yes, after that. Okay. So. Was, was there a third round where you bring your final two favorites in, or did it end after the second round of interviews? It ended after the second round. Okay. And then we we um, were in executive session for a long time on a Friday night. So we spent the first day of interviews. We started at eight thirty in the morning and went till seven at night. So we've we've put a lot of uh, energy and time to try to do the best thing for this county. Well, I think you made a good selection. Ron has uh, a lot of experience in Berkeley County Schools. Uh, I don't hear anybody, even cranky people, don't say a bad word about him, which is always a, a pretty good sign. And I know a lot of cranky people, by the way. Uh, so it seems like it's a pretty good decision. Uh, and a year from now, you'll obviously be able to back that up by renewing the contract with an offer or terminate it, if, if, if that's what uh, happens in the meantime. Well, you don't terminate it. It's just the contract. It ends. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It terminates, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay, now a non-Ron Stevens-related question, okay? Yes. Jackie's sitting there going, oh, oh goodness. Gosh. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Damon, I can't read your face because you're on the phone, and it's a still <laughs> photo of you. Uh, so uh, David Walker, okay? Um, I have no shortage of texts telling me that he's coming back as the head football coach at Martinsburg High School. Indeed, he's uh, rumored to be in the area for an interview today uh, for that position. 
I've not talked to David to verify that one way or the other. Jackie, true or false? Uh, you know as much as I do about that. Damon? Or I know as much as you do about that. <laughs> okay. So, Damon? I have heard I have heard nothing. I have no clue. All I, right. I know what you know. I, I can I, may I clear one thing up? Sure. I saw in the comments yesterday, I didn't get to be here yesterday or listen to the show, so I listened to it last night and I saw the comments, but someone said that Mr. Martin is always on his cell phone. Well, he's looking at board agenda materials because many times he comes straight from work and he doesn't have his iPad or his laptop, so he's looking at the agenda. He's not playing games or... So I just want to make that Yeah, and and that's... that's that's, For the people of my generation or slightly close to it, you have to understand that to people who are Michael's age, yes, this little whatever, whatever that is, two by your four pager. screen, your pager, yeah. Yeah, your modern day pager, has everything on it, and this is your office with you. So just because you're looking at your phone doesn't mean you're making calls or sending funny texts to somebody or, or whatever. You get all your information off that phone. It's your life. So don't overreact when you see somebody Michael's age or. Heck, even a a modern hipster such as myself, John. Yeah. Uh, you know, I've got for groovy during football season. <laughs> I have all my plans on there and whatever. I mean, it's just the way life works now. So let's well, not overreact. And when we go out to um, um, other sites, other like Spring Mills High School, or Hedgesville High School, sometimes my uh, a device doesn't work there. My iPad mm-hmm. or laptop. So then I have to use my phone, and it's not that I'm playing on the phone. Uh, I'm trying to look at the board materials. Absolutely. Well, Jackie, thanks for coming in. Thank you. Ron Stevens will be on tomorrow morning. Damon, appreciate your time this morning as well. You're welcome. Thank you, sir. Thanks for having us.